Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw a kitten's face. Now, this is going to be a little bit like this video I did some time ago of uh, drawing a wolf's face. On that one I focused a lot on the line placement and uh, raced through the, the fur, you know, the shading in that last part. This time we're going to kind of flip that around. I want to move through the line placement pretty quickly so that we can spend more time on uh, showing you how to draw fur. So, let's go ahead and get into a few basic guidelines. Okay, so this is the basic shape of the head here, and uh, I'm going to be drawing this uh, kitten sort of in a three-quarter point of view. And uh, just notice that the basic shape of the head is you know, considerably wider than it is tall. Um, because it is a three-quarter point of view, the chin, which is you know, a very subtle kind of... Um, uh, it's not indentation, I used to say outdentation protrusion. The chin, very subtle in its shape here, the contour, uh, is it's just a little shifted over to the left. And uh, I've left quite a lot of gaps up here because this is where the ears are going to go. And no time like the present. Let's draw those ears. All right, so we've got the uh, ears in place here. And, um, you know, from the photos that I studied, uh, I noticed, as you would expect, a very triangular shape, but I noticed a sort of secondary uh, tuft of fur area down here at the bottom. And then uh, eventually um, there'll be a, a sort of secondary line across here, uh, the sort of edge uh, of the tops of the ears. Let's go ahead and place the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. All right, well, we've got the eyes here. Uh, notice how small they are relative to the rest of the head. And um, I'd put them about halfway, maybe a touch closer to the bottom than the top, more or less halfway. But again, with this three-quarter view, uh, this eye that's a little closer to us appears larger uh, than the other eye. Um, notice the gap between the eyes for placing the nose. And then again, pay attention between the chin and the mouth. Um, now, we have this idea of a cat having this sort of, you know, rounded uh, shape down here, but when I looked at photographs, I uh, pretty much never saw that uh, clearly delineated. So we are going to try to keep it uh, realistic here and just leave it uh, with these downward sloping lines. Well, let's uh, draw the uh, uh, lines for the neck and then just a few lines for uh, some of the patterns that are going to occur uh, in the fur. All right, now the first thing you may notice is that, is that the neck seems quite wide. Well, you know, these are not actually the lines of the neck in a way. They're sort of the lines uh, of where the fur ends up stopping. The actual neck of the cat is probably much uh, smaller. And then these lines that are um, indicating patterns in the fur, that's going to change a lot from one cat to the other. So, um, you know, if you want to follow along with this in a step-by-step -step way, um, by all means, feel free to uh, place them exactly as I have. But uh, you can also feel free to uh, play around with it, come up with your own patterns. Anyway, let's zoom in and let's start working on uh, shading in the eyes. Now, uh, this cat's eyes are looking pretty bugged out right now, like someone slipped a little caffeine into the milk. Uh, so my job now is to kind of tame that wild look uh, in the eyes. I'm putting in uh, indications of highlights and, you know, I think what I ought to do, I guess I'll just, for, for the first, um, you know, for this thing with the highlights, I'll show you both eyes. But from now on, I'm just going to do all my work on the one eye, and then I'll do this other one in time lapse. Um, so, as I looked at photographs, again, of uh, kittens, I uh, noticed that there was a big, bold, black outline around the eyes, just as what I had seen when I did the wolf, you know, and I think it does sort of serve a purpose. A lot of people were leaving comments in terms of how this helps uh, keep the sun out of the eyes. Uh, maybe like, uh, you know, an American football player will do the same kind of thing. Uh, so uh, make sure if you are uh, trying to keep uh, your drawing realistic that you get this uh, the outline in here pretty bold, pretty bold. Now, the pupil um, of a cat, uh, famously, can sort of dilate in different ways and end up with different shapes. Um, uh, this one is fairly open wide the way I'm doing it right now. And uh, I guess what I'll do is start to do a little bit of shading here. Um, I'm going to have to uh, switch from this uh, Dixon Ticonderoga to a uh, black Prismacolor to get the really deep blacks that I want to get. And again, you know, this is going to be kind of a challenging video to fit all into um, a single 
um, you know, with a video without it going really, really long. So I may have to do a lot of time lapse. Sorry, guys. I know some of you don't like it. But um, notice that I'm adding a little extra tone around the bottom edge here. And then uh, even with human eyes, you'll find that very often the darkest area of the iris uh, is uh, toward the top, gradually getting lighter as it goes down. So actually I think I will switch right now uh, to the black Prisma color to give you some, some sense of how that can uh, really darken in the pupil in a nice way that makes it uh, pop and look more uh, believable. And the same sort of jet black color that I'm applying to the uh, pupil will also go uh, into that uh, outline that I was talking about that goes all the way around the eye. Now, as I said, I'm a little concerned with this video going super, super long. So uh, I'm going to do a few little uh, final touch-ups on this uh, eye here in time-lapse and then also apply the same technique um, all in time-lapse to this other eye. All right, so now we're going to move down to the nose, and I'll get at least the basic structure of this done in real time. It does indeed look uh, quite a bit like a triangle, as it is you know, normally rendered in a cartoon style. But there may be a little bit of a dip here, and I'm not necessarily in the structure of the nose, but in, in the area where the fur begins to come off of it. So I'm putting that in there. And then one thing that I noticed that I thought was quite interesting is that the nostril is, uh, you know, right here on the, the side of our triangle, but then on some cat breeds anyway, there's a slit that goes right up here um, on the edge. And then because the cat is in um, three-quarter view, you're not going to see that uh, so clearly over here, neither the nostril nor that little uh, slit, but it is quite clear on this one side. And then it comes down, um, you know, quite, quite like a triangle, really. It's rather like a triangle, isn't it? <laughs> and all my, all my English viewers, Mark, stop! No, don't do the English accent. It's terrible. Um, but this is going to get darkened in, uh, uh, you know, probably more with the um, Prisma color later on. And you might uh, do some light shading here. I like to try to make it a little darker at the bottom so as to convey some three dimensionality. Uh, although cats, I don't think, have a shiny nose quite the same way that a dog does or Rudolph for that matter. Worst joke worst joke I've ever made? Probably. Probably. Let's move down here and as I was saying, there is there is not that sort of curved shape. Uh, and this whole area of the mouth in the photographs that I studied, um, very subtle. You know, there might be a little darkness here where the mouth is, you know, mostly obscured. Uh, unless, of course, it's uh, open, you know, wide open or something like that. But we'll be doing some shading later on. Uh, otherwise, though, this is pretty much uh, all you have to draw down here. Um, I'll hold off on doing the um, uh, black Prismacolor dark lines until later on in the drawing process. But now I want to get into the most important part of this lesson, and that is the uh, the fur. Let's go ahead and start jumping into it right here. I'm going to uh, get a couple of basic guidelines here in place. I don't know if you'd call them guidelines, but they sort of we begin to uh, uh, do some rough indications of the fur uh, that give us a sense of the structure of the nose. And uh, again, it's interesting as I look back on the one that I did of the wolf um, not so long ago, uh, you find that the fur uh, across the snout, across the nose, area is very, very short uh, to the point where you can't, you know, when you're trying to draw it, you almost cannot draw the individual hairs, you know, unless you're really coming in super close, uh, you know, super close up. Uh, but as we come up here, you're going to be able to see, you know, lines that show the direction. But basically, um, uh, if you got down there with a uh, magnifying glass or something, you would see that they are going in a very vertical, uh, the hair is growing in a very vertical direction. Uh, up uh, across the uh, snoutal region. <laughs> I could, I'll just make up any words I want to, people. I don't even care anymore. Um, and then uh, the some of the cats that I saw it would have a, a pattern that sort of comes from the uh, tear duct area uh, across, sort of joining the eye area uh, down with uh, the nose area. 
And that's uh, pretty much going to be it for that. Let's see if I should, um, I guess the camera, let's me, I'll, I'll readjust the focus of the camera, just a second. Now, as I said, this has the potential to become an incredibly long video, uh, and so I'm going to try to uh, cover certain areas in real time uh, before uh, kicking it into time lapse. So I had done this sort of M shape here just to kind of get myself started, but the truth is this whole upper area is going to be, um, you know, fairly uh, darkened in. Uh, to different degrees, uh, but there's a white area uh, around the upper edge of the eyes, and I'm just going to sort of loosely uh, cordon off that uh, area that down here is going to remain uh, basically white, and uh, the same goes for over here as well. Um, again, different uh, kittens are going to have different fur patterns and so forth, but uh, at least some breeds seem to have a white area just above the eyes and also below it. I guess I might as well um, uh, do the same thing here. I always use the phrase uh, roping off. I feel like I'm roping off this area, saying, okay, no uh, pencil marks in the, in these white areas, and then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll know where to put uh, all the other shading. But you do want to start to pay attention to the direction of the fur, because uh, as I said before, it's um, you know basically going in a, a vertical direction, and the hair is getting steadily more visible as it gets longer. Uh, but as it comes across, and I guess I'll go over in this direction to begin with, um, it begins to fan out in um, a more of a diagonal direction. Now the hair is not super long at this stage yet, so I'm, I'm keeping my lines uh, pretty short as I gradually work my way toward, um, you know, final line work on the fur. Uh, but uh, as you get up towards the ears, that's where the hair really starts to get long and and um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll shift the camera to do a separate section uh, on the ears. Get some interesting patterns again at least in the photos I saw where this area begins to divide into um, you know gray and then sort of a more blackened in area. Uh, I'm, I'm loosely following that uh, original M guideline that I'd put there at, at the beginning, but I'm sort of allowing myself the freedom to uh, to reinterpret the M. Maybe it should be a W. <laughs> Let's throw caution to the wind. I'm, I'm lapsing back, and what is with the English accent today? Why am I... is there something about kittens that makes me <laughs> go English? I'm not sure. I know the, the English love their pets. When I was over there, Last year, and I saw them taking walks, walking the dogs all over the place. Boy, am I going off on a tangent. Mark, this has nothing to do with teaching people how to draw. Um, but uh, let's get back to it. The direction of the fur becomes pretty important, especially across here as we get further and further, um, you know, uh, uh, to the to the right of, of that forehead area. It begins to really start to uh, go more horizontal. Um, and then kind of you can start to detect a pattern of a curving pattern across here uh, as it curves up towards the ears. And um, yeah, like I said, you know, there's no way that I can show you every single last line that I do. It's, I'm going to have to skip over some parts of it, but uh, uh, basically this gets you started on that fur area above, you know, in the forehead. I'm going to shift the camera now so that we can talk about the fur of the uh, ears. Now, you know, I'm not a big fan of drawing guidelines and then completely erasing them later on, but in a way, this line here almost uh, doesn't even need to be seen anymore because what happens, and this was a bit of a surprise to me, um, at least with a lot of breeds of cats, uh, you will find um, a lot of fur, very long, um, fluffy fur right here, uh, seemingly inside the ear, or maybe it's just in front of it. And, um, you know, so I put that in there sort of to give myself a sense of the structure of the head, but you really don't see the structure of the head, uh, at least in, uh, again, the photos that I was studying. You see quite a big tuft of fur that is uh, white fur, in this case, uh, in front of the ear. Um, and then what you end up doing is drawing the sort of darkness of the area behind that fur. So I'm trying as much as best I can in real time to show you how this this uh, area back here is uh, the area that's going to start getting shaded. 
And um, I've, uh, at least one kitten photo that I looked at had sort of two areas, two directions. Not one direction, but two. Mark, please don't make references to one direction in the videos. Uh, very divisive, I'm sure, among my viewers. Uh, in any case, the, uh, the, the fur is going in two directions. We've got one uh, a area coming across here, and then another area, uh, another direction that's coming up here at the bottom. And you can sort of um, goof around with that. But this, uh, the darker areas back here are, um, uh, are really that of the ear itself, which is um, you know, largely obscured, or at least partially obscured, by this uh, big tuft of fur in the front. And this whole area here, I'm just going to shade in quickly. A lot of this stuff I'm going to be tightening up later on. This is the sort of darker area of the the furless region of the, uh, you know, it's not the inner ear, but the sort of inside of the, uh, the tips of the ear. Uh, I suppose the real uh, inner ear is back behind that fur somewhere. But all of this, I feel, is going to need a lot more um, tightening, detail, and so forth as I move along. Well, I feel like I've kind of covered enough of this. Um, let's move down to, uh, like, beneath the eye here uh, and, uh, and get in at least one more uh, lesson about the, drawing the fur. So uh, here's where I think understanding the direction of the fur becomes quite important. And, and I did notice with different breeds of cats that there seems to be um, a pattern of uh, uh, darkness that can sort of trail away from this upper uh, corner of the eye. And all of these lines that I'm drawing are going more or less in a uh, horizontal direction, maybe curving up just a little as they reach that uh, edge of the head. And, you know, I made it quite round looking um, at the beginning, but really it's uh, it's so furry that you're not going to see that roundness so much. It's it's all just a series of uh, jagged lines that suggest, um, you know, quite a furry uh, contour to uh, the head of this kitten. But what I really wanted to show you, rather than uh, going back to this ear area, was uh, how you will find a, a, a darkened area that begins to st start to um, fan out, the, and the lines start to fan downwards as you get down here. And uh, finally they start pointing in uh, more of a diagonal direction that's heading down to the lower right. So this is where you, you know, you're really wanting to focus on the directions of your lines and making sure that uh, it sort of makes sense. Uh, there's some sort of logic to how the, the fur is growing off of the face of the cat. And, you know, um, basically this final step of uh, fine-tuning, um, you know, uh, for example, uh, I may uh, actually erase away a little bit here um, to suggest white uh, fur coming in front of the darker areas. Um, you know, basically... It, for me to show you the entire process of drawing fur would just take hours. Um, but hopefully this video gets you some sense of uh, how you could begin to do these, uh, you know, to lay in your indications of the fur on a cat drawing of your own creation. And uh, one last area, maybe I'll just uh, do one final thing to, uh, without actually drawing the entire thing, just to give you a sense of uh, the fur beneath the chin. So down here beneath the uh, chin of the cat, uh, it gets quite furry indeed, and there's almost like a uh, sort of necklace of fur that comes across um, here and, and begins to join with the, you know, the rest of the fur of the body. So I'm sort of continuing along here, and it comes all the way back like so, until we reach this uh, back of the neck. Again, I'm doing this very loosely. I'm going to be tightening this all up later on. But I just want you to get a sense of the sort of directions, the general direction of your lines. And uh, again, depending on the breed of the cat, um, it can get quite furry back here. And it's just a matter of patience of sort of building it up little by little. And um, basically what I was finding as I looked at photographs was that this area down here, by shading it in just a little bit, 
um, you can uh, suggest the chin without actually drawing a dark line around it. Um, the, you know, the more realistic you want your drawing to be, the fewer actual black lines you're going to see around um, anything in the drawing, really. It's just uh, adjusting different tones and so forth. And I suppose the last thing that I should talk about, although this is not going to be my final way of doing it, is the um, whiskers, which, uh, as you would expect, generally coming down, you know, curving downward like so. But I found that uh, maybe one or two of the whiskers would curve in a opposite direction like that. So you get maybe one or two that are curving up, and that sort of adds another level of realism. Now, if you have a relatively uh, clean eraser, you can actually use the eraser to suggest white, you know, the whiteness of a uh, whisker. And uh, you can see that this requires quite a, it requires a good eraser and, and quite a lot of patience because sometimes you're going to have to kind of work back in here to tighten up the shading uh, to show that what you've tried to do there is create a white whisker that's passing in front of the darkness below it. And this is, you know, very time consuming to, you know, uh, you're drawing individual hairs here, basically, uh, and uh, I, I, I really will have to do that kind of thing in time lapse. But I think you've kind of got the basic idea now of the various regions of the uh, cat's face, uh, the kitten, I should say. And uh, let me know what you thought of this video. It, it is a challenge to do, um, you know, uh, realistic furry animals like this. Uh, very hard to do most of it real time. Uh, you do have to sort of um, skip over things at some point but I feel like I've kind of covered most of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull the camera back, and I'm going to kick it into a prolonged time lapse here. Rev up my time lapse machine and uh, finish off with this drawing. Well, we've kind of reached the end of the process here. I decided to take things further, uh, spend a lot of extra time on this polishing face, just to show you the possibilities uh, when you're patient at the end of the process. Uh, I really do think I need to do some kind of a video that focus ex focuses exclusively on this polishing face. Gonna have to figure out a way of doing that. But in the meantime, let me thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. We've got Brody's Ghost, the book four! It's out! I'm hearing from people who have it. I haven't got my comp copies yet, but they should be coming any day now. Mickey Falls, and as well, uh, Mastering Manga, my How to Draw book. I do greatly appreciate anyone who supports me by picking up any of those books, and of course just by watching the videos, leaving comments, subscribing, all that good stuff. But let's lay down this pencil. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.